as booster radiation necrosis from tumor recurrence is not straightforward, even for the most highly experienced neuroradiologist. A patient with left frontal loop hypodense lesion on CT, the lesion appear hypo-intense on T1, hyper-intense on T2, without significant post-contrast enhancement. From the conventional MRI, the lesion appears to be non-invasive, but the final diagnosis was glioblastoma. An article by Satoshi demonstrated many, many glioblastoma without significant post-contrast enhancement. On the other hand, heterogeneous enhancement in a low-grade eublase, Dennett, is uh, shown here. This patient resected for right frontal loop glioblastoma multiform and received uh, radiation therapy. During the follow-up, there is an irregular enhancing lesion at the operative bed associated with moderate mass effect. Is it tumor recurrence or just post-radiation necrosis? The next follow-up revealed marked regression of the enhancing lesion at the operative bed, keeping with post-radiation necrosis. So, gadolinium enhancement is not specific for either tumor grade nor tumor recurrence. And brain biopsy with histopathological diagnosis remains the gold standard for grading of glioma and in sometimes differentiating both radiation necrosis from tumor recurrence. So we need non-invasive imaging tools to reduce the number of brain biopsies and its complications, aiming to differentiate high from low-grade neoplasm, both radiation necrosis from tumor recurrence. There are well-established techniques used daily in radiological practice, such as MR perfusion and spectroscopy in assessment of brain tumors. MR perfusion, either using the dynamic susceptibility contrast enhancement T2 star or by T1 dynamic contrast enhancement, both are based upon the presence of new angiogenesis within the high-grade neoplasm. The high-grade neoplasm and the tumor recurrence will display high barberfused pattern, while the post radiation necrosis and low-grade neoplasm will be hypoperfused. This is right frontal loop, high-grade glioblastoma multiform. As we see here, there is hyperperfused pattern within the lesion. But perfusion has certain limitations. Some tumors, such as oligodendroglioma, may display foci of hyperperfusion in spite of the tumor grade, meaning both high and low-grade neoplasm will show hyperperfused pattern. Some chemotherapeutic agents has an anti-angiogenesis effect that will lead to hypoperfused pattern of the treated tumor in spite of the presence of active tumor tissue at the operative bed. This is, will lead to false negative results. One of the most important uh, limitations, the use of contrast media in pediatric age group. It has been proven that gadolinium is retained within the pediatric brains and it is re recommended now to reduce the use of uh, gadolinium as much as we can um, especially we are we dealing with brain tumors because we need serial follow up by contrast enhancement MRI and also by MR perfusion. Arterial spell labeling uh, is a technique without use of contrast media. It can display the pattern of uh, perfusion within the tumor. It is also affected by the anti angiogenesis effects of chemotherapeutic agents and still less sensitive than the contrast enhanced MR perfusion. The second famous technique we use in assessment of brain tumors is spectroscopy. By identification of suspicious or neoplastic metabolite ratios within the tumor, we can differentiate neoplastic from non-neoplastic lesions, post radiation necrosis from tumor recurrence. By examination of the non-enhancing peritumoral area, we can differentiate primary infiltrating glioma from brain deposits if the non-enhancing Perilegional area is free from neoplastic metabolite ratios. We are dealing with a brain deposit, while if the perilegional non-enhancing area display neoplastic metabolite ratios, then we are dealing with diffusely infiltrating high-grade neoplasm. The limitation of spectroscopy, mostly in homogeneous field, either by the hemorrhagic nature of the tumor itself or post-surgical hemorrhage, the presence of the tumor nearby bone or nearby paranasal sinus lead to degradation of the spectroscopic curve with uh, non-conclusive readings. 
So we need other advanced neural imaging techniques to bypass the limitation of these excellent tools aiming to differentiate high from low grade neoplasm, both radiation necrosis from tumor recurrence. Here we come to the amide proton transfer weighted image. It is a method that produces MRI uh, image different from the conventional MRI. What lies beneath the appearance of amide proton transfer weighted image? It is a chemical exchange saturation transfer. Its signal is based upon the presence of endogenous proteins and peptides typically present in high-grade neoplasm. These peptides are attached to their own protons and are surrounded by continuously moving water molecules. The signal from these moving water molecules is high. When we apply radiofrequency pulse that is matching with the protons of these proteins, this will be saturated, but still the signal coming from the water molecules is high. Now, when a chemical exchange occurs between these saturated protons and the surrounding water molecules, this results in reduction of the signal coming from the water molecules. The reduction of the signal will be translated into simplified color map, graded from high to low with the red color keeping with high grade neoplasm. This is right cerebellar hemisphere, medulloblastoma, a high-grade neoplasm. And as we see here, there is a high signal within uh, the tumor keeping with the high-grade neoplasm. Therefore, amide proton transfer with image doesn't require any contrast administration. What about the clinical application of amide proton transfer? First, tumor grading, separating high-grade from low-grade uh, uh, neoplasm. This diffuse astrocytoma in a patient with neurofibromatosis. As we see here, the lesion is hyperintense on flare without significant contrast enhancement. The amide proton transfer revealed low signal, the yellow color within the lesion, keeping with low grade neoplasm. For confirmation, serial follow up for the patient revealed stability of the lesion for more one than one year. This right frontal loop heterogeneous lesion without significant post-contrast enhancement and associated with perifocal edema. Is it a high or low grade neoplasm? Amide proton transfer revealed the low signal within the lesion, keeping with low grade neoplasm. The final diagnosis was grade two astrocytoma. An ill-defined lesion within the right frontal loop, crossing the midline to the left side through the genu of the corpus callosum and shows subtle post-contrast enhancement. Is it of high or low grade neoplasm? The amide proton transfer revealed intermediate to heart signal within the lesion, keeping with a high grade neoplasm, the final diagnosis, and a plastic astrocytoma. A well defined lesion showing heterogeneous enhancement within the right frontal loop associated with mild perifocal edema and mass effect. Is it a high or low grade neoplasm? The answer from the amide proton transfer revealed the high signal within the lesion keeping with a high grade neoplasm. And the final diagnosis was glioblastoma multiform. The second important application is post surgery and post management evaluation of the tumors and to also monitor the response of the chemotherapeutic agents of the tumor. These patients resected for right frontal loop glioblastoma and before the start of the chemotherapy, MRI revealed heterogeneous enhancement area at the posterior aspects of the operative bed. Amide proton transfer revealed the high signal, keeping with tumor residual. The patient received three cycle of chemotherapy. Now, the area of enhancement has been increased. It could be either post-management changes or tumor recurrence or, or increase of the uh, size of the tumor. The high signal confirmed the possibility of uh, tumor recurrence and the patient was shifted to another uh, chemotherapeutic agent uh, and respond well. Another patient resected for high-grade neoplasm and pre-treatment assessment revealed heterogeneous enhancing lesion at the operative bed showing high signal keeping with tumor residual. The patient received chemotherapeutic agent, three cycles, and then amide proton transfer showed regression of the signal at the operative bed that keeping with good therapeutic response. 
This patient first resected for glioblastoma multiform and during follow-up, there is an enhancing area at the operative bed. The MR perfusion revealed an area of hyperperfusion, keeping with tumor recurrence. The patient then received anti chemotherapeutic agents. And perfusion here, there is hypoperfusion at the operative bed, meaning that there is good response. But the amide proton transfer has another opinion. It shows high signal within the operative bed, keeping with tumor recurrence. The final diagnosis was recurrence by doing a brain biopsy, and this was explained by the anti-angionesis effect of chemotherapy that leads to hypoperfusion of the lesion in spite of the active tumor tissues at the operative bed. So amide proton transfer is superior to perfusion in assessment of the uh, therapeutic res response. A young patient with evening sarcoma and developed a brain deposit. The deposit is high signal on amide proton transfer. The child was going to operation, and this is a post-operative MRI, revealing an area of abnormal enhancement at the operative bed. The amide proton transfer was done and demonstrated an area of high signal, keeping with tumor residual. But the neurosurgeon was not convinced about the examination, and he asked for conventional MRI follow-up. This is the initial study, two months, and at eight months, the lesion has been evidently increased, keeping with the initial diagnosis by amide proton transfer of tumor residual. To conclude, amide proton transfer image technique is an uncontrast uh, based technique. It can be used to differentiate low from high grade neoplasm, post radiation necrosis from tumor recurrence, and also to monitor the response of the tumor to chemotherapy. There are many articles about the use of amide proton transfer in other oncologic uh, applications, such as assessment of prostatic adenocarcinoma, differentiating type 1 and type 2 of endometrial carcinoma, also non-oncologic applications such as assessment of ischemic brambra in the brain or assessment of the stage of intracerebral hemorrhage. Uh, there are many articles about the use of amide proton transfer. So I think about uh, amide proton transfer is a promising technique and it uh, will take its place soon in radiological practice. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much.